it's not a fun feeling. It's not acceptable for a kid or for anyone, either ESL or just any kid to feel that way. Bullies are not okay. Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. Either way, thank you for being here. I have recorded this video maybe three or four times now and I can't seem to get it how I want it to. Today we're talking about me growing up Vietnamese American in honor of AAPI month this month. As you know, May is AAPI month. I'm so happy that we get a month to ourselves. If you've watched my other videos, I made a few videos on my Vietnamese culture. I love celebrating my Vietnamese culture. I just wanted to share with you guys what it was like growing up in a Vietnamese American household with two other siblings and my immigrant parents. I wanted to make this statement first, a disclaimer. This is how my childhood was like growing up Vietnamese American first generation. Yours may or may not look like this. It may be completely different. I just wanted to say this so everyone can understand the struggle it was dealing with two cultures. As you probably know, my parents are from Vietnam. They are immigrants here, so I was the first daughter, the first generation born here, and it had a lot of interesting strings that came with it. My parents were pretty traditional, pretty strict. I wasn't allowed to sleep over at my friend's house, but I was allowed to have sleepovers. Even though guys did like me, they wouldn't let me date, so that was pretty funny. My sister had to follow me everywhere I went, so even if it was the mall hangout with girlfriends, my sister still followed me. I'm pretty sure she secretly liked it. Being the eldest, either sister or brother, you're called Ji Hai or An Hai, which means it's kind of like a title. It's a job title. You are responsible for leading the path for your siblings. You're responsible for checking in hotels when you're on vacation. You're responsible for everything and anything that they can think of, your parents can think of, but you didn't sign up for it. You didn't apply for the job. You just were kind of handed, okay, you have two other siblings you got to take care of. It was really conflicting for me. I was a very mean sister to my siblings. I take full responsibility for that however I do think a part of it was having that responsibility that I didn't want I was struggling with dealing with two cultures going to school and feeling like I was living a double life every time I did go to school I was this brilliant radiant person at school with my friends and then going home into this kind of darkness where I had to be so straightforward so to the point it really made me not understand self-love and that's a journey i'm still on today i made a video on what i learned at therapy if you want to check that out i'm still learning today people who are first generation born my friends that i've met had to be the realtor for the parents they had to translate documents there's so many amazing things that first generation immigrant kids have done and are going to do so i didn't want to come off across as ungrateful or biased i know we have done such amazing amazing things and will continue to do so but in honor of AAPI month, I wanted to share kind of the background, the context of who I was then that made me who I am today. Being Jihai means that I was pretty angry all the time. I was really stubborn. I still am very stubborn in good ways, I would think. But I would talk back to my parents and they would say it's home, which means I think rude or disrespectful. I would have to kneel in front of our ancestors and think about what I had done. I didn't take it seriously. I was just angry and my little sister, well, she's not little, she's three years younger than me. She would kneel with me too, just in solidarity. And I just thought that I'd put that out there because yeah, they were little heads, but they still loved me and still got my back. English is my second language, so Vietnamese was my first, or is my first. I didn't really speak English in school when I was five till even in elementary school. We always talked in Vietnamese at home, and I was fluent. I sang, I argued, I yelled in Vietnamese, so that's how you know you're fluent. Now, I can't really compose a whole sentence. I remember going to elementary school, all the ESL kids had to take some sort of testing. I can't even remember what it's called to look it up today. I just remember all of us felt 
or at least me, I felt so embarrassed. All my friends who didn't have to take the exam just looked at us confused and it just felt really isolating. I don't understand why the district made us do that. That's one of the things that I remember vividly from my childhood that was different than normal kids. I didn't understand sexual innuendos and kids you know their kids they think it's funny yes it's funny i wore a shirt to free dress day in middle school it was the first time my first year there it was probably a few months in i wore a shirt from abercrombie and fitch that said don't call me cowgirl until you've seen me ride i didn't understand it my parents didn't understand it their esl as well i come in i remember my teacher was really nice and he just gave me a look not like a bad look just a look and i sat across this desk from the girl that was in my table and she goes ill ill like and just her face like i still remember it today and i've I'm really good at like blocking out my childhood. I still remember it today, just like the disgust in her face and then making me feel ashamed and embarrassed. I don't know, it's just like really insulting and really disrespectful. I know we were kids then and she may have stuff going on in her own life, but that's one of the times in my life where I remember being embarrassed of who I was. It's not a fun feeling. It's not acceptable for a kid or for anyone, either ESL or just any kid to Feel that way bullies are not okay they're not not allowed in, in my world so i still remember it to this day and, and um yeah that's one of the examples of when i felt so embarrassed so alone of being vietnamese american in seventh grade we had to do sex ed class and everyone had their parents sign their permission slips and mine didn't <laughs> So on top of being the new girl, I was put outside the classroom. I had to do some worksheets while everyone watched the sex ed video. And it was pretty funny. Everyone came back and they were making jokes and stuff. That's another time I felt pretty alone too. I had said that I wasn't really exposed to pop culture. I was exposed to Vietnamese pop culture. We watched Paris by Night, we watched Asian Entertainment. My sister and I would try to learn the dances. I remember having to go to a Paris by Night concert and it was the boringest thing I've ever been to. My mom loved, loved, loved Vietnamese dubbed Chinese movies. So it's called Viem Thao, which basically means Chinese video. They take place back in the day or even like before Earth. There's the monkey one where they're all in heaven. Just really scary ghost stories for a kid to watch with her mom. I still remember the nightmares that I had. I remember another one where there was a ghost in someone's back seat. So every time, even as an adult, I drive, I'll <laughs> look in the back seat. I recently watched Turning Red. I thought it was the best portrayal of my childhood ever. May had said something about don't let your parents take too much from you because then you'll lose yourself and I totally agree with that. The number one rule in my family, honor your parents. They're the supreme beings who gave you life who sweated and sacrificed so much to put a roof over your head, food on your plate, an epic amount of food. The least you can do in return is every single thing they ask. Of course, some people are like, be careful. Honoring your parents sounds great, but if you take it too far, well, you might forget to honor yourself. She had also said that you feel like you owe them something because they came across waters, oceans for you. And I still kind of, kind of do, try to do everything for my parents. And no matter what, no matter how many straight A's I got, no matter the degrees that I have, the CPA exams that I pass, I feel like it's still not good enough for them. Well, maybe it's, it's my issue, but anything and everything that I do is to prove to them that I can be this person on my own. I can be who I am today because of my actions. And I totally, totally stand by that. You can have kids in the same 
family. You can give them the same amount of resources, same amount of love, but they will all turn out differently. So what I chose to do with my resources, I got myself two degrees. I got myself, you know, through the CPA exams, I got myself a house that I currently live in. I did all these things by myself and I still feel like it's not good enough. I know there's so many other first generation kids who feel that way too. I don't know how we're going to overcome it. I don't know because I'm damn near 29 years old and I still feel that way. Something in my head that bugs me like you got to keep going. You got to keep going. I know that whatever our parents had went through, whatever obstacles refugee camp they had to go through, what we're going through is nothing compared to what they went through. I know that physically, emotionally, mentally, being raised by immigrant parents, I think it's a whole new playbook on its own. I don't think I can ever compare that and I'm trying not to. Yes, Vietnamese families gossip like no other. It spreads like wildfire. I remember all the crazy they had said to me. You're fat, you're too skinny, your boobs are too big. You're selfish as if I wanted to take care of an entire family at such a young age. Everything, like I said, I did was for them and I still got you're selfish or you're not thinking about your family when I have done more than I immensely capable of for them. Somehow I gathered the strength and the mental capacity to do all that for them and I still got you're selfish. I had a lot of you're rude or you're stubborn, which is which is fair. I was very stubborn and I still am very straightforward. I will say what's on my mind and that's not very typical of Vietnamese culture. Kids are supposed to respect their elders or passiveness. That's what I'm trying to say. I had you're sensitive. I had your shoulders are too wide. Are you wow? You're really thick boned. Wow. Wonder if you can lose weight. My sisters, aunts, kids, boyfriend, whatever is going to UCLA or UC Davis or UC Berkeley. You can't even get straight A's. Just very toxic like that makes me so mad because I know I'm way past that. People are still comparing random kids to their kids, and it's like you're supposed to be your kid's hero. You're supposed to be your kid's number one supporter. Why are you doing this to them? Why are you making them feel less than when they have, like me, tried anything and everything to be the best daughter, best sister they can possibly be? You're asking for more when you haven't provided more. And then of course, the, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. You should be a model, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, that's good. I have nothing against models, but that just diminishes my capabilities and my capacity of doing what I want to do because you think because my looks are going to get me somewhere in life. Yeah, I know I have the resources to do whatever I want <laughs> and you're telling me to go be a model? That just insults my intelligence and everything that I've worked for. I had my mom's friends who told me I should rip off my dad to not have to work. And I think that goes into the traditional Vietnamese culture of women supposed to be submissive, supposed to get money from their husbands or whatever. And to tell me to rip off my dad is just very um, invasive. It's an invasive culture that Vietnamese people have. I know there's going to be people out there who are saying, you shouldn't badmouth your culture. No, this is the facts. This is what's going on. I'm not going to lie that everything was, is rainbows and unicorns. It's not. It has its goods. It has its bads, just like any other culture. I had a lot of, you're going to fail. Even for my parents today, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. The f you think I'm going to fail after being through hell and back with my childhood. You think I'm going to fail after pushing myself for two and a half years to pass a CPA exam. You obviously don't know me. You don't know that I am a stubborn I will do whatever it takes to achieve my goals with or without you. And I still get that today. I still get you're going to fail. Like many other Asians, they have a stigma around mental health. My parents aren't like that, thankfully, but I know there's a lot of other parents who don't acknowledge that their kids are going down a depressive hole. They don't give them the help that they need. And I think that's very dangerous. I think with everything that I have said, I think a part of what contributes depression is the pressure we feel to do something to prove to you that your efforts to come to America America aren't in vain. Some parents to say, you're not doing enough, you're gonna fail, blah, 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 blah. Mental health is weakness. I don't think that's right. It took me going to college, getting the help that I needed to be where I am today, to sit in front of a camera and not bawl my eyes out to say this. I just want all the kids out there to know you're gonna be okay. 
superstitions that Asians believe. If you don't eat every grain of rice, or at least what my parents told me, you don't eat every grain of rice, you're gonna have to eat worms in the afterlife. Shadows are ghosts. So I never played with my shadow. I was very scared of ghosts and very superstitious still. And then, mom, where did moles come from? Dad, where did moles come from? And they're like, well, a fly pooped on you. <laughs> and I'm like, how did it get to certain parts of my body? Asians are just very superstitious. Like any mole on your face, any mole on your body could mean something. So I have this mole on my face. One of my aunts told my mom to remove it. So I got zapped and it didn't even take out the mole. I have a huge scar there today too. So that's how it was in a nutshell growing up. Vietnamese American, don't get me wrong, I'm very proud of my culture today. I'm very adamant on learning more about it, learning the language. I didn't want to portray my life as this YouTube video picture perfect thing. Like it's not. These are the struggles that I had to deal with. I'm sure I'm not the only one, which is why I wanted to go on here and say that. This is what I'm working on. This is how I'm starting to embrace myself, embrace my culture. In honor of AAPI month, I wanted to go in depth of my culture and my background. I know this is not a happy fluffy video, but I have other videos for that if you want to watch. I would be remiss if I did and address Asian hate, which I'm going to do in my next video. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in that video. Bye.